Cold-blooded killer on the loose, suspected of murdering five people. Why deputies want people to be on guard tonight. Undocumented immigrants on the Trump payroll? Tonight, reaction from one of the president's sons. And weekend wash out a live look at storm track radar tonight. Could Sunday be any better than today? The news starts right now. CBS 12 News starts now. And good evening as we come on the air this Saturday night. The manhunt intensifies for a suspected shooter accused of murdering five people. A man authorities say is armed and dangerous. Deputies in Louisiana believe 21-year-old Dakota Theriot killed his parents and later killed three other people in their home. Now, this morning, the de detectives in Livingston Parish, that's just outside of Baton Rouge, responded to a home for reports of shots fired, and that's when they found the parents shot and killed. Then, just about 40 minutes to the south, they found three others. One of them pronounced dead on the scene. The others later died at the hospital. There's a lot of family members out there that are hurting right now, and our, our prayers go out to those family members, and, and they're looking at us to do our job and to solve this crime. Now, Theriot is wanted for first-degree murder, illegal use of weapons, and home invasion. Again, he is considered armed and dangerous. He's driving a stolen 2004 Dodge Ram pickup, gray and silver in color. No word tonight on the motive. And, of course, as this story continues to develop, we'll have the very latest on air and online at CBS12.com. Now to a breaking news update tonight. A longtime friend and one-time advisor of President Trump maintaining his innocence once again. Roger Stone insisting he's not guilty of charges outlined in a federal indictment. And he's blasting an early morning FBI raid on his Florida home. Reporter Jeff Pagase tonight has more from outside Stone's home in Fort Lauderdale. Roger Stone walked out of his Fort Lauderdale home today and immediately dismissed speculation that he shared information about the WikiLeaks disclosures with then-candidate Trump in 2016. Well, who were you communicating with then if it wasn't the president? Uh, uh, I wasn't. Those two, uh, those two assertions regarding uh, campaign official one and campaign official two are incorrect. They are false. Now, that doesn't mean that the special counsel can't induce somebody to say that. But they would be people who were easily impeachable because they either were seeking a reduction in their sentence or because they had an ax to grind against me. This will all come out at trial. After emerging from the courthouse yesterday, the flamboyant political operative did a series of cable network interviews. It's about silencing me. Dismissing the charges against him. No senior campaign official told me to find out anything about WikiLeaks. And he sharply denounced the FBI for the arrest at his home. I am 66 years old. I do not have a valid passport. I do not own a gun. They have all of my records. There was no reason to treat me like Pablo Escobar. The former Trump campaign advisor is charged with five counts of lying, one count of obstruction, and one count of witness tampering. The court papers allege that he shared information directly with the Trump campaign about WikiLeaks' release of Democratic Party emails hacked by the Russians. The stolen data was released at key moments during the 2016 election in an attempt to damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. The indictment mentions multiple unnamed Trump campaign officials who were in contact with Stone about WikiLeaks. One person in particular directed a senior campaign official to talk to Stone about the releases. Were you aware Roger Stone was updating your campaign on WikiLeaks? President Trump did not answer questions about Stone on Friday, but Saturday he tweeted, if Roger Stone was indicted for lying to Congress, what about the lying done by Comey, Brennan, Clapper, and so many others? The president is referring to former top law enforcement and intelligence officials who launched the original Russia investigation in 2016. Nearly two and a half years later, there have been more than 35 indictments or guilty pleas. Roger Stone says that he will plead not guilty as he prepares to leave his home here in South Florida to head north to Washington for his arraignment in federal court on Tuesday. Jeff Begay's CBS News.
Okay, the rain continues across Palm Beach County and parts of the Treasure Coast right now. As you notice in the CBS 12 Storm Track radar, we continue to see some spotty showers which are coming in from the south and west across the area. In fact, you'll notice we've got more rain down across Broward and also the southwest Florida coast. So this will continue to work in overnight, giving us a soggy night and a soggy Sunday coming our way. West Palm Beach right now, 61 degrees, winds north. Uh, look at the rainfall total today, about three quarters of an inch. Much needed rain continues across the area. And here's our forecast clouds and rain throughout the night on again, off again, showers, downpours, some gusty winds. And even as we head in tomorrow, there is a chance for an isolated thunderstorm, especially in the afternoon. Come up in minutes, the rainfall amounts you can expect where you live, when we'll see the sun again, and when we can expect our next strong cold front coming your way with the seven day forecast. Michael, thank you so much. New tonight, a recent report alleges one of President Trump's golf courses fired employees who were undocumented immigrants. This as a president for, fought for a border wall. Now citing workers and their attorney, the Washington Post reported about a dozen employees of Trump National Golf Club in Westchester County, New York, were let go last week after a recent audit found their documents to actually be fake. Now in a statement to the paper, Eric Trump says the company is working to identify any employee who used false and fraudulent documents to get employment. Meantime, at Mar-a-Lago, a former chef has filed a lawsuit against President Trump's Palm Beach estate. Graham Randall claims that he was fired after he reported sexual harassment against two female employees. Now, according to documents, Randall was fired because the club was losing business. The lawsuit disputes that claim, saying Mar-a-Lago profited immensely following the president's election. All right, a Palm Beach County worker out on bond tonight. She's accused of stealing around six grand from SNAP, or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Deputies arrested this woman, 57-year-old Kathy Dillard. She is accused of, of using fake letters saying she had no income so she could apply for SNAP benefits. Officials say she tried several times to get food stamps, and that's what tipped officials off. County officials placed her on administrative leave back in June, June of 2018, eventually fired her. Tonight, she's out on $3,000 bond. Tonight, we are learning more about the man accused of murdering five people inside a Sebring bank. Records show that 21-year-old Zephan Zaver worked at a Walmart, a Mexican restaurant, and an oil chain store in Indiana before moving to Florida and getting a job as a corrections officer in Avon Park. Now, he worked at each job for just a few months, and records show he never had any issues with his employers. Now, Zaver is accused of going into the SunTrust Bank back on Wednesday and killing four employees and a customer. Now, for the first time, we're hearing from a soldier in Hawaii who trained with him. And take a listen to, here's uh, how he remembers him. He was friendly, like I said, very soft-spoken, mellow, humble at heart. He would just, like, just kind of wander off, just kind of be by himself. So I guess that's the part of him that just kind of question, you know, you kind of question, why does he act like this? Now, ever since the shooting, the Sebring community trying to heal from the tragedy that tore the tiny town of 10,000 people apart. At 12.36 p.m., the exact moment Zaver called 911 to report he had shot everyone in the bank, a moment of silence yesterday, tears flowing as community members stood side by side, the hope that the victims will get justice and the families will get some closure. At the end of the day, it could have been us, too. It was just a matter of a right or left. This is senseless. And the hate has to stop. It has to stop. One bank employee managed to escape the victims, all women. The community holding a vigil for them tomorrow night. Now, we learned a short time ago that Governor Ron DeSantis will be there as well. And, of course, our coverage of the deadly bank attack doesn't stop here. For more on this, we, all you need to do is head on over to our website, cbs12.com, for what we're learning about the victims and the alleged gunmen. Well, it may have been rainy and chilly for most of the day, but that didn't stop people from, on the Treasure Coast from enjoying some Italian love. CBS 12's Aaron McPherson live tonight in Port St. Lucie where the festival just wrapped up for the day. And Aaron, uh, the taste of uh, Little Italy here, how did it go? Well, you will see in just a few moments, but I had a blast and everyone else here had a really good time as well. Now, the rain hindered it a little bit. Typically, organizers tell me they get about 15,000 people in this weekend, so they're hoping for an even bigger turnout tomorrow. Everything is completely closed down now, but it was a successful day. The taste 
of Little Italy. Bringing Italian culture to Port St. Lucie all day and all night. I feel like I'm back home with my real relatives and family. Big time Tommy is a true Italian. I put this up against New York any day. He says he's been going to the festival since it started. And I haven't missed a year since. Which was small 12 years ago and now has grown into a full blown carnival. <laughs> with games, rides, and lots of good food. We're all here having as much food as we could possibly eat. We're having as much fun as we possibly can have. Chef Marco Shortino is the spokesperson for Galbani Cheese. In the middle of the festival, they held a contest. Who could build the highest cheese tower? I didn't win, but Galbani still donated to the charity I chose, the Special Olympics of St. Lucie County. $250! showing what Italians are truly about. And if you come to the festival, you can be an Italian for a day, just like I was. And it's an Italian, what gets better than that? Sauces and peppers, zeppelins. I mean, oh, mwah, gotta love it. I'm telling you, it's definitely a good time. They open again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Now, tonight, Lena Prima was the headliner, and tomorrow, the headliner is someone who placed fifth on America's Got Talent. We have more information on our website if you're interested. Reporting live in Port St. Lucie, Aaron McPherson, CBS 12 News. Good time out there tonight. All right, thanks, Aaron. Well, a big night for the Caridad Center tonight, celebrating 30 years of service. It's the state's largest free clinic holding its largest annual fundraiser, the Call to Heart Ball. It's held at the Opalm Beach Resort and Spa. More than 400 of Palm Beach County's corporate health care and philanthropic elite joining, enjoying food, fun, and a night full of dancing. There is a woman we recognize right there, CBS 12 News anchor Liz Carantes, emceeing the event. Now, they rely on donors and supporters as they continue to expand their programs to help the poor, uninsured, and underserved children and families of Palm Beach County. Up next tonight, the governor, the government is back open, at least for now, but what this means for workers and their paychecks. Michael. Well, we know about the rain coming across our area this weekend, but as a front moves through, we could be looking at the potential for some severe weather. Who has the best chance for that occurring and the specific weather impacts expected in your neighborhood coming right up. CBS 12 News at 11. And as we continue this Saturday night, a look at our Sky Team 12 drone shot of the day. Beautiful there. Video from downtown West Palm Beach. CBS 12, the one to turn to. Speaking of turning, let's go to caught on camera tonight. A neighborhood mail truck. Did you see that explosion? Yes, up in flames. Neighbors could only watch in shock as the truck rolled backwards down the street. Then coming to a stop on a neighbor's lawn before hitting another car. Now, witnesses say the truck's driver tried to get up an icy hill but kept spinning his wheels. And that's when officials believe a blown tire may have sparked that explosion. The good news here, that driver is okay. Right now, looking live at the nation's capital tonight, five weeks after a budget battle put the brakes on the federal government, the wheels are slowly beginning to turn again. It is a process that could be temporary if Congress and the White House can't agree on a border security plan before a new deadline in just under three weeks. Now, the president taking to Twitter today to continue his case for a border wall. Meantime, furloughed workers should start receiving missed paychecks by early next week. Food for the furloughed. While the federal government may be back open, some federal workers still taking a hit from missing two paychecks. And that's why one center in Boca Raton is helping them get back on their feet, at least until they get paid. CBS 12's James Torres spoke to one woman whose family is affected by the shutdown, but still she has the time to give back. To stay government ID badge, federal workers had access to gourmet groceries and a chance to pay off their bills. Carts and bags filled with everything you could need in the house. This is very good on the grill. Volunteers with the Wayne Barton Study Center in Boca held this grocery giveaway. The center's founder says it's his way of giving a little to people who are struggling a lot. And these people have worked. These people deserve their paycheck and they're not being able to receive it to pay their bills. Volunteers here, like Cassandra Bogan, are also offering emotional support. In fact, Bogan... Enjoy your shopping trip. Yeah. Yes, yes. ...can probably relate to these workers the most. My husband worked for Homeland Security in Miami at the Miami International Airport, and we are affected by the shutdown. He hasn't received the check, 
for four weeks. She says she got her hands on what you see here. Anything from fruits, meat, toiletries, to a whole lot of bread. It's all meant to give federal workers peace of mind until they get a piece of their paycheck. Do you even know what it's like to not to be able to feed your family? To not be able to pay a bill? To have your mortgage foreclosed because you haven't received a paycheck? While these workers are relieved the shutdown is over for now, it's all still very intimidating. You know that you do have bills to pay that's coming, but because we had set aside some resources and not knowing how long uh, the shutdown was gonna last, you know your resources could run out. In Boca Raton, I'm James Torres, CBS 12 News. Glad they're coming together for each other and leaders at the center also meeting with those workers so they could pay half of their electric bills. Furloughed workers should start getting their missed paychecks by early next week. All right, joining us now, CBS 12 meteorologist Michael Ehrenberg. And boy, what a day out there today, Michael. Plenty of rain, yeah. cold temperatures. It really started last night, if, uh, if I'm right. It really did. Much needed rain, Paul. But That's the timing true. is just not that good, yeah, right? Well, like I, we said earlier, weekend washout, maybe. Well, I, I, I didn't give it yeah. away, did I? No, you didn't. No, we not yet. about this. Not yet. <laughs> Aaron's out there at the uh, Feast of Little Italy. Right. Uh, God bless her, making the best of that. South Florida Fair is going on this weekend. So, yeah, we could use better timing. But, of course, we are getting that much needed rain activity. Of course, here's what's going on. we got a stall front down to the south of us. Moisture is streaming in overhead. That's all the green you see there. That's continuing to squeeze out the atmosphere. So we're getting mostly light rain. Sometimes there's some embedded heavier downpours like the yellow you see in the radar. It looks like it's about to end in eastern Palm Beach County, but not long. There'll be more rain coming our way. So if you do have plans to go to the South Florida Fair tomorrow, Bring the umbrella or stay inside in the Expo Center. There's lots of activities to do in there. 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 8 p.m., the fair hours. Lots of clouds, occasional showers. Uh, it's thunderstorm, not out of the question with temperatures remaining in the 60s all day. So hour by hour, here we go. The rain, if it is going to end later on this evening, it's going to come back into the area. There's 8 o'clock in the morning, a soaker for a good part of the area. We go ahead to the mid to late part of the day. Here comes the warm front moving through. So south of this warm front, there will be some moderately unstable air, hence the small possibility to some severe weather from South County, South Palm Beach County, down across Broward and Miami Dade. Low pressure moves right across the state, continues the rain threat through about early Monday morning. There's 7 o'clock, and then as that low and front move away, it will dry out and it will improve with dry, cool air coming in for Monday afternoon and then on into Tuesday. So, rainfall potential here's the latest short range RPM model, two to five inches possible across our area. Right now, this model shows the most rain will be from about Jupiter on north to the Vero Beach. Each area. Keep in mind these numbers are going to change around, but it gives us the potential for several inches of rain. And like I said earlier, this dark rain from about Boynton, Boca and Delray, south through Broward and Miami Dade, small isolated chance for a spin up tornado or strong wind gusts. Otherwise, we're all going to be impacted by the rain with a very high impact from that. There could be some flooding in those normal low lying areas that do flood, and winds tomorrow good gusts past 30 to 40 miles an hour. In fact, here's our gust forecast in the morning 30, 30 to 35 in parts of the area. The winds stay up there as we head on into Monday, and then the winds will shift in the northwest and gradually die down, but not until Tuesday. Because of those winds, six to nine foot seas off the Treasure Coast on Sunday will be all areas on Monday with a high rip current risk before the seas begin to relax a little bit by Tuesday. Big dip in the jet stream for the mid part of next week, driving bitterly cold Arctic air through much of the East Coast, and even down here, we will continue to stay chillier than normal. Rainy, breezy, cool tonight, 57 inland, low 60s coast. For tomorrow, your Sunday, have the umbrella handy, do something indoors, maybe rent a video, go to a movie, cloudy skies, more showers, a stray storm here or there. It won't rain all the time, but it's probably going to rain most of the time. It doesn't happen that often here in South Florida. Seven-day forecast, where, of course, your weekend's always in view. There are those cool temperatures. Look at this. We begin to see some sun Monday. Tuesday, probably the nicest day before more chilly air comes our way. 60s for highs on Wednesday, lows in the 40s for a couple of nights we rebound getting back to normal with maybe a few spotty showers by next friday and saturday there's your forecast michael thank you the performance wear giant under armor now taking on a new fashion frontier that's space the company is teaming up with virgin galactic they'll be designing spacesuits for the company's passengers and pilots now virgin galactic plans to fly hundreds of tourists to the edge of space later on this year they'll be in a rocket powered plane so far far more than 600 people have bought tickets and no more photoshopping ads for CVS beauty products. The drugstore chain says the move is a part of a broader plan to use photos that aren't airbrushed or digitally enhanced. 
CBS says it hopes to have all beauty imagery in stores, online, and in marketing to be Photoshop-free or labeled as enhanced by the year 2020. I want to go back now to a big night for the Caridad Center tonight, celebrating 30 years of service. So important here to our entire community, really. The state's largest free clinic holding its largest annual fundraiser. And here's the right name to it. It's the Call to Hardball. Just want to make sure you know that. It's held at the O Palm Beach Resort and Spa. More than 400 of Palm Beach County's corporate health care and philanthropic elite enjoying food, fun, and a night of dancing. And, of course, as we see, there's CBS 12 News anchor Liz Carantes. She emceed the event tonight. Now they rely on donors and supporters as they continue to expand their programs to help the poor, uninsured, and underserved children and families right here in Palm Beach County. Sports is next. Not one, but two. She may be a young player, but don't let that fool you. This South Florida tennis pro gets another big win on the court. And a tough day for Tiger on the links. He rallied at the end of play, but would it be enough? I'm back with your Honda Sports Report next. This week on Full Measure, solar power, clean and cheap or costly and dirty. As California mandates solar panels on new homes, we look at both sides. Plus, malaria, a notorious and persistent killer disease. We'll go to a South American country for a surprising story on how they beat it. And a way to go back in time to web pages of the past, inside the Wayback Machine. These stories and more this week on Full Measure. South Florida Honda Sports Report. And Naomi Osaka's first Grand Slam win was, of course, overshadowed by controversy. Serena Williams, remember, accused of being coached in that U.S. Open final and completely lost her composure after being penalized. But the 21-year-old South Florida resident, well, she proved today that she is for real. Osaka winning her second straight Grand Slam title with a hard-fought three-set victory over Petra Kavitova in the Australian Open final. The big win down under propels Osaka to number one in the world rankings. She is the youngest number one ranked player in nearly a decade. Thank you, everyone, and um, I'm really honored to have played in this final. So, yeah, thank you. With tonight's Grand Slam win, Osaka becomes the first tennis player from Japan to reach number one in the rankings. And meantime, it was tough Saturday today for Jupiter Island resident Tiger Woods at the Farmers Insurance Open, that's for sure. That's his first tournament of 2019. Now, Tiger struggled with his irons and with his putting, but thanks to some late birdies, well, he finished with a round of one under on the day. Now, yeah, Woods is at five under overall, 13 strokes back of the leader, Justin Rose. Former Honda Classic champion Adam Scott is three strokes back of the lead at 15 under. Of course, you can watch the final round of the Farmers Insurance Open right here tomorrow at 3 o'clock on CBS 12. All right, a final check of your weather with Michael Ehrenberg. Media radio stations, proud partners of the CBS 12 News Network, the one to turn to. All right, as promised, Michael is back with one last look at your forecast. Yeah, Paul, we continue to see showers and downpours come across parts of our area, Palm Beach County, more out there towards the Gulf of Mexico. So hour by hour tomorrow, not a good outdoor day at all. Plant something indoors, sorry about that. Clouds, occasional rain, showers, maybe an isolated storm, especially far southern areas with highs staying in the 60s. Rain chance tomorrow, 80 to 90 percent. We dry it out a little bit Monday. It's windy, and then another cold front drops our temperatures again Wednesday. Paul, we're staying below normal all week long. No air conditioning needed. Every time I sit next to you, we are still on the roller coaster. We are. The January roller coaster this continues. Must, this must be an expensive ride. I think it is. Nah, talking about a ride, take a look at this, everybody. Ahoy, matey! That's my best pirate impression. What Ahoy. Good, not bad. It's not bad? I wonder what the folks at home think. Well, <laughs> pirates invading Tampa Bay for the annual Gasparilla Pirate Festival. The pirates, you see, arrive by sea as the fully rigged Jose Gasparilla sails into Tampa Bay, along with plenty of other boats. All that followed by the parade of pirates. Now, more than 300,000 people were expected to line the streets this year. And this, Michael, actually is the 102nd annual event and having been at several of those events right. myself having lived in tampa what a great time i didn't know you could fit that many pirates in a post you can That's and you can throw people. lots of beads out too I'm sure you can <laughs> Wish we're there i know right michael <laughs> thank you and thanks for watching tonight we'll see you right back here tomorrow night at 6 30. good night